When I heard that an Endless Ocean sequel was coming out, I did something I'm usually quite against. I pre-ordered it. While I do absolutely think that pre-ordering is a scam and doesn't benefit the consumer at all, I really wanted to be part of the early conversation surrounding the game since I was such a fan of the first two. It is worth noting that the only reason to pre-order a physical copy is to avoid driving to a store that has already sold out. There is absolutely no reason to ever pre-order a digital copy. Tell me why I'm wrong in the comments. For this video, I played through the first chapter of the story and completed my first solo dive. Obviously this won't be a comprehensive overview of the game, though that will be coming, but I still think it's worth noting that there will be spoilers for very early game stuff. I'd like this to be a comparison point for when I finish the game and have a much more thorough opinion. The story starts in a similar sequence to Blue World, or Adventures of the Deep for our European pals, where you're being guided through basic controls in a shallow area. Instead of our favorite former diver jean Eric, though, we're greeted by a fully voiced, kinda. Thank you for your hard work on behalf of the Ocean Research Project. The head office reports that you're one of their best. AI. This is a strange choice. While I do think the text-to-speech is great for accessibility, especially in the encyclopedia, it does sound decidedly more robotic than we're used to hearing in a world with TikTok. Before long, we're introduced to the main plot. Basically, we're in the Veiled Sea, an area that's geography is constantly changing. You may remember that we heard about this in the trailer, and I had this to say. While the name fits the Endless Ocean vibe, I'm generally pretty tired of procedural content. There are ways that this could fit into the story, but I'm skeptical that I'll find this particularly additive. The lore here is that at the center of the Veiled Sea is a reef made of several different types of coral called the World Coral. It's dying and we're part of the research team trying to fix it. When trying to leave, we see a massive golden coelacanth. This seems a bit early to learn to dive, enter a cave, and see a massive palette swap version of a real animal. This must be how Endless Ocean 1 and 2 speedrunners feel. After this, we meet Daniel. He's very competitive and loves salvaging. I think I smell a game theory in the works. Together with Daniel, we see the coelacanth again, but this time we're able to scan it. And... that's chapter one. I'm kinda surprised at how few fish we saw in an Endless Ocean game, but that could just be limited to the tutorial. Additionally, they're trying to work the procedural generation into the story since our character is on a team of researchers trying to learn about the Veiled Sea, but I am skeptical that that'll be worth it. In my experience, procedural generation and story go together a bit like ice cream and pizza. As mentioned in my previous video, I don't particularly care for procedural generation and I certainly don't think Endless Ocean would benefit from it. I have to admit that I left the story mode feeling a little underwhelmed but thought it would be unfair to give my first impressions without first checking on the solo dive option. To my surprise, this is where the game started to feel a bit more like Endless Ocean. It isn't without its faults, and I would certainly place it below Endless Ocean 1 or 2, but it still has merit. Before I explain how it all works though, I'll remind you that I only went on one solo dive, so I may get some things wrong. I pray for your forgiveness, but if that's out of reach, I understand. So, you spawn into the solo dive into what is presumably a procedural landscape. The first thing I noticed was a steep increase in marine animals from the story mode. There's an incredible number and variety of marine creatures in one map. While the number of animals is very cool, the variety may be a double-edged sword. I was able to find 205 out of 578 entries in the encyclopedia from just one dive. Additionally, the combination of animals seems haphazard. In the same map, you're seeing animals from the Arctic to the Antarctic and from the surface to the depths. Despite this, I did have fun looking at the animals, as is to be expected. The same slapdash nature can be seen in the map. As an artifact of the procedural generation, the entire map is extremely anonymous. I went all over the map generated for my first dive and found that the only real landmarks were a boat and a few floating landmasses in the center. I am assuming that that second one was not a bug, but I am honestly not sure. This is a pretty sad departure from Blue World, which had several well-designed maps with landmarks to keep you interested and oriented. I am worried that Luminous's maps will be more No Man's Sky than Endless Ocean. Much like the previous two games, there is an ancient ocean-faring civilization that we're learning about. It seems that there will be some interesting lore here, but like the fish, I seem to have collected a pretty significant chunk of it on my first dive. The last thing I wanted to mention was the surprising amount of features that didn't carry over from the previous games. I should add a quick caveat here that these may be unlocked later in the game, but I don't think that is likely. If you do end up unlocking these, feel free to tell me how dumb and wrong I am. The first thing I noticed was that you can no longer surface. While this is a feature that went nearly unused in the first game, the second utilized it to show off a whole new group of creatures or just variant behavior on the marine ones. 
While I don't think this is some great tragedy, it is incredibly odd to cut it. Many of your tools were also removed. The pen, sea whistle, feeding, and petting do not seem to be present this time around. While again, I don't think any individual one of these being removed ruins the game, the number of things removed does lead to a cheaper feeling game. I should mention that the salvage and camera did get carried over. Salvage works kinda like a cross between the first two games. You don't need a different tool to see the salvage, but you are collecting it for currency that you can apply for cosmetics. Right now, it looks like the only cosmetic options are different palettes and stickers, which I was pretty disappointed to see after Blue World. This may be addressed in a patch or DLC, or it might not even be the case now, honestly. Who's to say? The camera has more functionality than that of previous games, with more filters and angles. You can even set it to the Mowgli's Island Horror Filter. All in all, my first impressions of Endless Ocean Luminous were less than stellar. But I'm keeping an open mind, and I do plan on finishing the game. Before the game came out, my fiancé said, well, if you're playing it to look at fish, I don't see how they could fuck that up. Then when we were playing it, she said they seemed to have fucked up looking at the fish, on account of how few fish we had seen, and the unpleasant blue glow every animal has until you scan it. I do expect the game to get updates in the upcoming months, but as it stands right now, I can't really recommend it. If you have a Wii, Wii U, or emulator, I'd recommend just loading up Endless Ocean or Blue World again. If you don't, I don't know, buy Abzu? It's cheaper than Luminous and short enough that you can finish it on a plane, that's what I did.